Hey guys, it's Alex with Hammond Watch. Uh, my interest in watches is very diverse. You know, I, I like high end and in hot horology, I like playing a lot with the, the lower end of watches and, and entry level stuff. And I feel like the middle ground is where you can get kind of trapped and end up overpaying for, for a lot more marketing. But I'm watching a YouTube channel and it's one that's very value driven and it's called Just One More Watch. The host Jody does a fantastic job, but he's always pushing these uh, kind of Chinese manufactured no or, or tiny brand watches. And uh, he did a top 10 sale video. Uh, I thought the offer was intriguing enough. Went ahead and pulled the trigger and I wanted to share the watch with you today. And then just kind of my thoughts on it and the, the whole concept of these small AliExpress watches. So the sizing on it to, to get us started, uh, it said 44 millimeters, it came in and I just measured it right at 43 and a half, which is a nice surprise. Uh, a 22 millimeter lug width. It has a really nice thickness of a uh, 11 and a quarter. Uh, the crown here is nine and one thirds and then uh, it sits up just over five millimeters from the side of the case. The biggest proposition with, with the watch is obviously going to be the, the movement back here, but we'll get to that in, in just a second. Uh, you're looking at a sapphire crystal. Your strap here is terrible, uh, kind of as you'd expect though, uh, at 66 bucks. doesn't matter if it's you know Seiko or Pulsar or Invicta, the, the strap's not going to be of great quality. Um, it's three and three quarters of a millimeter thick. Um, it has a ridiculously wide buckle at 32 millimeters. Um, not finished well, you have some pitting in the steel. So just remember, you know, at, at this price point, uh, when you're picking up these you know, cheap Chinese watches, uh, the quality of the steel isn't gonna be there. The Siegel ST36 is a exact clone of a ETA 6497. A uh, very prolific manual round, wound movement. Um, it's also referred to as the, the Unitas. Uh, workhorse, great power reserve, I want to say 50 hours. Uh, hand winding, it's not a hacking movement, very much kind of old school, but the beef that they get, and, and Siegel has been around for a while, you know, under and over lubrication is always a, a big thing in these. Uh, I'll be honest with you, when I got into this, uh, it's a got a little bit it's a little bit excessive on the lubrication um, you can see it kind of throughout the movement on the flat surfaces um, not terribly you know i'm not going to dock it too much especially you know i, I always remember the price point um, the other big issue with these is you hear a lot of complaints of debris um, i'll get you guys in here as close as i can but went through had a good look Everything looked relatively clean. You know, uh, I think for what you get in a lot of other watches, you know, it, it is a value proposition. You know, I won't argue that it presents a, a very great movement design that, that they certainly didn't have to pay to develop, you know, for uh, an extremely cheap price. But my problem with these, and, and it's, you know, you walk a fine line of trying not to be a watch snob while, while also remembering why you like watches in the first place. I don't like this because it's disposable. You know, it, you don't get parts for uh, Siegel ST36s. You know, go to your local watchmaker and ask them. You know, parts aren't easily interchangeable. Uh, the build uh, of an EDA 6497 is different than the ST. Um, there's actually a great article on AsianWatches.com. I'll link to it in the description. A watchmaker kind of goes through it and talks about his opinion and the differences between the two. Uh, but if it comes in, the recommendation is to chuck it and to throw a new movement in there. And I have a hard time with kind of that part of society in general, the whole, you know, buy it cheap, use it, throw it away and buy another one. You know, I like watches because they're timeless because when I buy it, you know, even if I don't keep it forever, I know that's going to be around. Uh, it kind of takes the romance out of watches for me to, to have these knowing that one day it's going to break down and uh, I'm just going to have to rip its guts out and throw something new in. And, and I think that's why I'm going to move it down the road. 
if that doesn't bother you and you're planning on just keeping it for a short period of time and then you know selling it or, or if it breaks down maybe give it away you know go for it uh, i think it, it's certainly worth the money and uh, the hands on this could be a bit better you can see that they're uh, pressed out and uh you know I'm glad that they didn't paint them blue, but they kind of get lost into the dial. Um, seconds hand runs nice and smooth, even hits the, the track pretty nicely. So here it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. Um, if I didn't mention it earlier, your, your lug to lug or, or kind of height of the watch, it's gonna be 51 and a half and actually just a touch over. So make sure that you've got the wrist for it. I think seven and a quarter and up, you guys are gonna be fine uh, below that. Kind of use caution, you know, uh, you know, to each their own. But I, I never want to have lugs hanging off the end of my wrist. I, I want to make sure that I actually have the arm underneath it to, to pull it off. So there's a loom. Uh, it's going to die pretty fast, but it, it covers all the indices and, and all of the hands. Um, if you guys have enjoyed the content, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the bell icon, and you'll get notifications when I put out new content. Uh, additionally, I'll put up some other videos. Have a look. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, and what you guys want to see. See you in the next one.